Hey guys, welcome to today's vlog. It's Sunday. Kitten is not going to be joining us today, so it's just a solo me and you. She uh, had a slip and fall accident and ended up fracturing her leg and dislocating her ankle very, very badly. Took some time, but we pointed out that tomorrow isn't here right now, baby. An absent mind came to roam around, captured you in a foggy cloud, baby. Standing on my toes on the edge, I'm ready to go. See it clear when the shadows are lit, I'm ready to go. Hey guys, welcome to today's vlog. It's Sunday. Kitten is not going to be joining us today, so it's just a solo me and you. We're going to take a look at Vancouver's seawall, which is the world's largest uninterrupted seawall walk. It's 28 kilometers long. We're not going to do the whole thing, but we are going to try to start from Canada Place, which is where I'm at right now on the upper observation deck. And you can see the iconic sails in behind me that you can see uh, from downtown and from the harbor as you're coming in. This is where the cruise ships dock normally through the cruise ship season and they depart for places to the north to Alaska. They also go to Hawaii, the Panama Canal, even into Asia on occasion. But we're primarily known for a departure point to Alaska. Anyway, so we're gonna start from, from Canada Place here. And this is the official starting point of the seawall. It then travels all the way around Stanley Park and it terminates at Kitsilano Beach, which is not how far we're gonna go. But we'll see how far we get along the way and uh, I'll try to bring up the uh, highlights that we see as we go. So let's get started and uh, hope you enjoy the walk. I have my Tim Hortons coffee with me, of course, so I'm good to go. So directly across from Canada Place is the Convention Center. And of course the Vancouver downtown skyline. So this is how you know you're in the right spot, partially. You can see Stanley Park there in the background, and that's where we're gonna be headed. Let's see a bit of one of the harbor tours down here. This is a dinner cruise boat and harbor tour that you can take while you're in Vancouver if you ever come to visit. There are a few different operators that operate different sized vessels for tours and dinner cruises. As long as three and four hours long. Some of them operate during the day, some of them are evening cruises. So our first stop before we start the uh, adventure along the seawall is Jack Pool Plaza, which is just on the other side of the convention center. The Olympic torch from Vancouver's 2010 Olympic Games. It is occasionally lit up uh, for special occasions still now and then, but not very often, unfortunately. 
the other Cactus Club Cafe just in behind that. And then over here is the Tappan Barrel Pub. This is one place, if you remember, um, watched our very first vlog from July when we went to the Shangri-La Hotel for my birthday. This is one of the places that we wanted to stop and show you guys. So in this part of the seawall walk, you can see Harbor Seaplane, Harbor Air Seaplane Base. Uh, Harbor Air is the largest seaplane operator in North America. They do daily flights from Vancouver here to Vancouver Island, and they even go to points up north as well. You can also, from the office here, if you're so inclined, book a 30 or 40 minute sightseeing tour over Vancouver and the mountain areas which I understand is just a spectacular flight and uh, visit. So again, that's Stanley Park in the far background there, where we'll be headed on the seawall path. And you can see the seawall path is just below me there. I'm uh, still on the upper uh, level, and we're just gonna head down here in a minute and walk down along the sea path. I didn't think this was gonna be such a great day for this, but it turns out it's pretty sunny. Um, at least in Vancouver. Langley was a little bit miserable. It's a little after 1.30, but 1.40 when we're starting our walk. We'll see how long it takes us to get to our end location and uh, see what sights we can see along the way. We're just starting off our first uh, sort of area is gonna be Cool Harbor. There's a few little restaurants, some rest areas along here um, and condominiums, things like that. So we're going to be walking into the area of Cool Harbor now. Uh, it's kind of a place with some high-end condominiums in the background, apartment towers. And uh, you're going to see a lot of really nice and very expensive yachts in this area when we get there. Hey, I've been dreaming about you. Every night I see your clearest day It's just something about the way you make me feel Cause I can't concentrate Anytime you're beside me, yeah It's what you do to me I can barely breathe Hey, I've been thinking about you And all the words that I'm gonna say Next time that I see a pretty face Cause I can concentrate Anytime you're beside me Yeah, it's what you do to me I can barely breathe It's what you do There are some very nice, very expensive boats here as well. So uh, I like boats and if anybody is in the mood to lend me a couple hundred thousand or a couple million dollars for a boat, or actually, let's not go with a loan, let's just go with a donation. I'm more than happy to accept it. Although, you know, I still don't think I can afford to run a boat even if somebody gave me one. They are not cheap. This is the Cool Harbor area. It's kind of like the last little piece of civilization as we're going around before we head into Stanley Park. That little parks area still. And then we're gonna head over to Stanley Park from here. We've been walking now for 
only about 10 minutes. So we're still really in the downtown core of Vancouver for the most part. Well, not the core, but the edge of it by the water. So yeah, about 10 minutes from where we started from to get to here. The background there, one of the neater little things, you can see some of the uh, houseboats. Let's see if we can get in here. here in the background. So here's a few of the uh, party yachts that you can either book passage on is it just a regular dinner cruise or if you have a corporate or family event and you feel and you have money and you feel like you want to have a private yacht dinner party with a dance floor and a bar you can charter one of these yachts it's got a full crew serving crew captain they take you out tour the harbor and uh so you a nice dinner at the same time Forget how much it takes No reasons left behind One day I'll make you mine And it won't come in. I won't get up. Probably one of the nicest things about Vancouver, honestly, is the amount of green space, parks, walkways that uh, Vancouver and just the lower mainland in general offers to you. There's different things you can do in your nature. So we're just entering towards Stanley Park now and uh, I don't know if you guys can tell but uh, it's getting a little quieter. Not quite as busy as it was before. There's still quite a few people out walking. I'm, you can see that the path is separated here. So one side is pedestrian side and one side is for bikes. And I was on the bike side so Rather than cause trouble, let's move over and uh, head over to the uh, pedestrian side. One of the interesting thing, well, not interesting, I guess, but uh, one of the other cruise companies that will offer you dinner and corporate events has these three ships right here. It's known as Harbor Cruises. And I've actually worked aboard all three of these boats at one point. And uh, of the tour companies that I can recommend, I can tell you that these guys have nice boats. And uh, their cruise is about three and a half to four hours long, typically. I think they may have changed them in the last little while. It's been a few years since I've been on board. Uh, mostly nighttime type cruises and dinner stuff. You can, uh, of course, rent them for private functions as well, corporate events, things like that. But yeah, they were really good. I really enjoyed working with them. Hey guys, so now that we're heading into Stanley Park, one of the other reasons that Kitten couldn't come with me today is this walk would have been just too much for her to handle. Um, shortly after she moved to Canada, uh, three years ago, as a matter of fact, about two weeks after she got here, she uh, had a slip and fall accident and ended up fracturing her leg and dislocating her ankle very, very badly. She needed surgery and she was in the hospital for about a week actually it was pretty bad i felt pretty bad about it but it makes us a matched pair because the very first time i went to the philippines to visit kitten we did a, an adventure travel trip to bohol so that i could see the tarsiers chocolate hills 
Lobok River, things like that. And unfortunately, once we got to the Chocolate Hills, I was videotaping and not paying a lot of attention to what I was doing, apparently. And uh, slipped while I was wearing a pair of sandals going down a set of stairs. And my hand was on the handrail, but instead of letting it go, I gripped the handrail tighter so that my arm went up in behind me and it popped my left shoulder out. Like, not just a little bit, but completely. So, long story short, I spent 12 hours in the Philippines in the middle of nowhere, screaming like a little girl in absolute agony. But Kitten and her cousin Mitchy and Goms took incredibly good care of me, got me to the hospital, and 12 hours later, my shoulder was relocated. So the fact that Kitten came to Canada and shortly right after she got here, she fell, broke her leg, dislocated her ankle. Not great things, but I guess it makes us a matched pair. That being said, that's why she can't come on this trip today or on this walk. Not only is she working, but it's quite a long walk and it's just too hard for her on her leg right now still. So you guys have to suffer with me alone. But I hope you enjoyed the little walk and the tour of what you can see around Vancouver. The thing about uh, Stanley Park recently is that they've had a bunch of coyote attacks. Uh, if you don't know what a coyote is, it's basically like a wild city dog. Um, that kind of an idea. It's a wild animal. It's about the size of a medium-sized dog. They can be in packs or separate. But they do live in uh, Stanley Park and in other rural areas, or not rural, sorry, in other urban areas, they just scavenge it, like typically. Unfortunately, the problem is, is that people have been feeding them and they've gotten used to humans. So they're starting to come out a little bit more during the day and they've been attacking people, not seriously, but nipping people. There's been quite a few attacks. So the park is closed at night. So we're gonna be on the lookout for coyotes while we're here. Hopefully we won't run in it to any, but it is a fairly busy day, so I don't think we will. And uh, we'll continue on at least as far as we can go. It's been um, ooh, almost an hour, and we just got to Stanley Park now. I got this picture in my closet, it's gathering dust right now, and the edges have been folded once or twice. Doesn't look the same no more Cause the sun has made it pale I used to have it hanging on my wall some time ago So way there in the distance, see if we can zoom in, you can see You can see the sails, those little white things up there in the corner That's where we started from Way over there and we still got a ways to go. So another uh, blast from one of our previous vlogs is the horse-drawn carriage ride at Stanley Park. Look at these big guys. Hi guys. Hello. So if you come to Stanley Park, 
highly recommend the horse drawn carriage ride. It was a lot of fun and very informative. The tour guides have quite a bit of information about Stanley Park, different things that you can learn. And you get to spend a little time with these big guys here. stairs here below the seawall. They're actually steeper than they look when you're up at the top of them. It's like kind of a precarious uh, little walk down onto the water right here. Low tide. So now we're down below the seawall. It was actually made by a master stonemason that spent 32 years of his life working on this wall and yet he never saw it completed. He passed away before the completion of the wall. So yeah, the uh, construction of the seawall started in 1917, and it opened in 1971, but it wasn't completed until 1980. So it took 63 years to fully complete the seawall around Stanley Park and downtown Vancouver. It was originally started as an anti-erosion project because of the tides by the Lionsgate Bridge. They were eroding the uh, surface of Stanley Park, taking away a lot of territory. So they originally started it as an anti-erosion project. Oh, we might be running into a problem here. Another reason I can't take Kitten for this walk because at this point she would be very unhappy with me. And yeah, this isn't as far as we can go this way, so... Um, it's coming in. We're going to have to go back to the stairs that I started up and then we'll continue back the way we came. So you can see the two girls on the bikes there. They just went by. They're actually on rental bikes that you can uh, get at various areas around Vancouver. Just pick up the bike uh, at one spot, ride it for as long as you want, drop it off at the next rental spot, and you're good to go. It does require a membership. I'm not really sure how much it costs. It's not something that I've done. Uh, but once you sign up with a membership, yeah, you can pick up a bike at any of the bike kiosks throughout the city, ride it around, and then uh, just return it to wherever it came from. Wherever your end spot is, actually, you really have to uh, drop it off where you started from. You can just drop it off in any kiosk uh, that has a bike rental location. Spend the day here at Stanley Park and just escape the sounds of the city, escape the stress, enjoy the day. There are beaches here. This is the Vancouver Aquarium that was shut down for a little while during due to COVID. Not really sure if it's open again yet. Of course, there's a horse-drawn horse, car horse carriage ride that you can enjoy. You get picnic here. There's Prospect Point uh, that we've been to before and show you around. It overlooks Stanley Park and Lionsgate Bridge. The approach into the uh, Inner Harbor. Well, we're almost at HMCS Discovery, which is the uh, Naval Reserve Base on Deadman's Island. So we'll have a quick look at that when we get there. So we're coming up to HMS Discovery. Canada having been a British colony at one time, we still conform to um, some British standards. So it's the Royal Canadian Navy, the Royal Canadian Air Force, and all of our ships start with HMCS, which stands for Her Majesty's Canadian Ship. You have the uh, crest here which for HMS Discovery, which corresponds with its name is a disc over the Y. So then you have here, disc, and then over Y. It's kind of neat. It is located right there uh, on Dead Man's Island. Oh, we 
here getting very close to my end goal which was the uh, um, nine o'clock gun we don't have very much farther to go so this area of point or the park is known as hallelujah point and it was an area where squatters were living in the 1860s europeans chinese and others had shacks built along here that were living in this area until the park opened in 1888 at which point they started evicting people Unfortunately, they started with the Chinese and then they evicted everybody else until the last person was eventually evicted in 1957. So we're coming up to, you can see there's just a little building there on the top, which is the 9 o'clock gun, which fires from Stanley Park here every night at exactly 9 o'clock. Uh, it's just a ongoing tradition now, but it used to be so that the mariners and people who had something to set their clock spot. There is a house still in Stanley Park. It's the only house still in Stanley Park where the caretaker for the 9 o'clock gun still lives today. So I was going to stop, but I think we're going to carry on a little bit farther. So we're going to carry on a little bit farther from uh, the nine o'clock gun which you can see just in behind me there we're now going to walk just as far as the brockton point lighthouse and the reason for that is because the section of stanley park seawall that we're walking on now is actually vancouver's oldest graveyard this section from the water up into the hills here behind me was all graves at one point they've all been removed as far as i know um but in the 1800s that's what it was. It was all graves. A little on the creepy side. But since it's October and Halloween's coming up, I figured we might as well walk through the graveyard to the Brockton Point Lighthouse, which is not that much farther. And then we'll turn around and I will uh, call it a day and head back. And there's our end goal, the Brockton Point Lighthouse. So we're just going to walk through this piece and uh, yeah, that'll be the end of our tour of the Stanley Park Seawall as far as the Brockton Point Lighthouse goes anyway. And there's so much, much more along the way. We haven't walked to the beaches or any of that stuff, but it's a little bit beyond where I can go today. bridge it's only 60 meters or 61 meters tall which means that the tallest cruise ship that could pass through there has to be only 60 meters it can only pass through uh, during the time the, uh, the big one I think when it passes through is got 10 meters of space between the top of the ship and the top bottom of the bridge at low tide as it passes through pretty freaky so as they continue to build bigger and bigger cruise ships they won't be able to come into the port of Vancouver because there's just no space for them. The bridge is a bit of a hindrance for the giant cruise ship. Okay, so I'm essentially back where I started from. Taking me two, a little bit more than two hours round trip from the start of my thing to get back to Canada Place from my walk along the seawall. And hopefully 
hope you enjoyed our little trip around Stanley Park and Seawall. If you did, please like and subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Love to hear your comments. Hope to see you guys on our next vlog. Remember, we have two upcoming Halloween vlogs to add to our Spirit Halloween that we started with. So we'll have three for October, all Halloween based. Look forward to doing those and hope you guys enjoy them. So yet again, please like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, really helps us out. And we appreciate all of you guys' support. Thanks, see you next time.